Hello and welcome to How to Science in Kerbal Space Program version 0.23. This is episode 4. And unlike last time where I promised we go to the moon, this time we are going to the moon. Let's check out our science. We have unlocked the first one, two, three, four tiers, and we're starting on the fifth tier where each technology node costs 90 science to unlock. We have unlocked the uh, fuel systems which give us the fuel ducts and RCS plus a small Rokumak engine which might come in handy later. We see from the science archives we have unlocked quite a bit of the available science on Kerbin. We have a little bit of stuff we could get so there's another like two or three we could get from a surface sample uh, or some other samples from around Kerbin, but not really enough to get into this next tier where we need 90 science per node. So we are going to go to a new place, and the harder it is to get to, then the more science you get. So we're going to the moon and probably Minmus. Let's go into the VAB and I've built a ship that I think can get me there. I haven't tested it yet, but it looks pretty good. Let me let me just go over some of the principles of what we're trying to accomplish here. First, around the moon there's going to be near orbit and high orbit. So we want to get samples of science from each of those regions. So that's why we have two science materials bays. And I brought along four uh, goo containers. Uh, simply so we could do each uh, experiment twice and unlock nearly 100% of the available science in each of those regions. We're just going to do a flyby, perhaps in orbit, perhaps not, if we can get our science, but then we can get EVAs from each position. I brought along an antenna, or actually I don't need two. It is on symmetry. I just need one antenna just to send back the crew report because we'll get 100% of the value of that even transmitting so that way I can do a crew report from each location uh, let's go ahead and resave that moon one because this is our first mission to the moon we have three parachutes which was fine for our craft that had one container and two goo, goo uh, containers now that we have a larger ship I think the three parachutes will still be fine but I've added landing struts to cushion some of the uh, shock so we don't lose our experiments when we land. Uh, that should be enough to uh, get us down safely. We have a stage for maneuvering around the moon and getting us back to Kerbin. We have a stage that I hope will get us to the moon. Um, actually, I want to let me rethink that just a bit. Let's add half a tank to that arrangement just just for safety margin of safety on that because this is pushing a lot of extra weight come on get in there perfect All right, that attached fine. All right, so that's, yeah, so that stage will get us out of Kerbin orbit. Hopefully some of this stage will get us, be able to push us, give us a start on that. But if not, this stage will get us into um, an insertion for the moon. This stage is going to get us into space, hopefully, into orbit. We have six boosters, which should get us off the ground by themselves and then we'll have three stages of asparagus staging so as you can see this stage will drop off first then that stage then that stage and hopefully that will be enough to get us into orbit this will get us out of orbit into moon lunar insertion and this last stage will let us maneuver around the moon and bring us back to Kerbin. Let's see if that all works. Um, if this does work for 
for the moon. It should also work for Minmus. So we'll try to do both those missions and get all of the orbital science from the moon on this episode. All right, so one more save. Let's see who we got in crew. Uh, Jebediah, no. We'll save you for something special. A uh, limb tree. He's not very bright and not very courageous. So let's give him a chance. All right, to the launch pad. All right, so let's give just a touch of throttle. SAS on. Like I said, I think these boosters alone will be enough to get us into the sky. Three, two, one, lift off. Yes, more than enough acceleration from the solid rocket boosters. Let's give this just a touch of lean now. Is the moon anywhere in sight? Nope, moon's below the horizon. Might make a good thumbnail. Go ahead and stage. And throttling up the full. Pretty nice flight profile so far. We're uh, accelerating up to 10,000 meters and we're still below 200 meters per second. We're approaching it nicely. Got a nice stable rocket here. Lem tree seems a little concerned but not panicking so that's good. Ready for first stage. Alright over 11,000 meters. Let's get our lean going here. Turn some of this velocity into horizontal velocity. The tough part of getting to orbit is not getting up high enough, it's getting fast enough horizontally. So we have to increase the surface speed to over about 2300 meters per second in order to reach orbit. Let's take a look at our profile here. 21,000. Pretty nice burn. Let's get back so we can make sure we don't miss our stage. Two engines going full bore. Apoapsis of 30,000, climbing a little slower than I'd like. It's going to climb back up to 45 and get some vertical velocity. might be a close thing to get in orbit. Approaching a thousand meters per second. About two-thirds of a fuel tank left on each of these. And our prograde is dropping towards the horizon, which is not good. So I probably need a little something more in these middle stages. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting up to some nice altitude. 
so I think we are going to make it. As soon as that hits 75, I'll cut the engines and we'll go for orbit, orbital burn then. Perfect. All right, and still a third of a tank left. That should be more than enough to get us into orbit once we get reach our apoapsis. Let's go ahead and lean over now. That extra reaction wheel is coming real in handy right now. Okay, we're almost into space ourselves. All right, you can do it, Lemtree. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty happy right now. He seems to be a little more confident about the mission now. And we are into space in... Now. There we go, there's the music. 45 seconds or so to Apoapsis. Can still use our main engines here for burning and save the rest of the fuel for getting to the moon. All right, let's go ahead and light this up. Making small adjustments to try to keep our apoapsis in front of us. Our orbit's expanding very nicely. Getting ready to cut engines. Bam. All right, 40, 74, 76. Perfect. Let's see how much fuel we have left on this state. Wow, we just, just about ran out. That's about as perfect as it can get. Uh, all right, now we got to set up our maneuver for the moon. And we always kind of, that's always kind of a 90 degree... One of the uh, old ways of doing it, as soon as you came over and saw the moon on the horizon, you burned, and that would stretch out your orbit to, for an intersect. So that's what we're going to do here. Oops. Let's get rid of that, because I accidentally grabbed the... Uh, I wanted to do that instead. All right, let's go ahead and get this... All right, there is our encounter. And we're just needing an encounter that gets... Moon periapsis 91,000, that's perfect. We can adjust that as we get closer. 861 meters per second. Um, this last stage does not have that kind of... Oomph. Uh, it says 45 seconds, but that's based on these two engines burning instead of the one. So we'll let, we'll use up that fuel and then change over. But we can expect probably a two-minute burn. So let's go ahead and get ourselves over. To our maneuver. All right, so with about a minute left, I think that will be... I still have to get over to 
the attitude we need to be. There's the moon over the horizon. So let's lock in to our marker there. Okay, locked in. It's good. The last bit of burn for these rockets. And now stage. And a uh, minute three, that's not too bad. 30 seconds left in the burn, this should be perfect. And pretty good rate of burn there, so I think this, this stage, I, I'm glad I added this little half tank, because I think that'll be just about perfect. If anything, we'll probably have a lot of extra fuel, which is always good. that means we can use this rocket even with its flaws. I think if I take a more vertical flight path to start with. Alright, getting ready to slow down. Let's see what our... Okay, we're still not quite there. Let's just give a little touch. There we go. Just do that by eyeball. Get rid of the node. And we are on our way to moon. Let's see what kind of crazy things happen when we get there. Uh, I think we're actually on a collision course because there's no uh, periapsis. Let's give it just... There it is. 61,000. Okay, so... And the question I always have, and I... If any of you guys know of a good way of telling actually which way we're going to orbit, I mean, it seems like we're going to go counterclockwise, or clockwise, which is counter the way we normally want to go. But I've kind of given up on trying to guess which way uh, this all works out. This could very well be counterclockwise, which goes with the rotation of the moon. Well, it's tidally locked, but because it orbits in that direction it actually does rotate once each time around because when you're trying to bring multiple ships to a uh, planetary orbit or moon or orbit you of course want them all orbiting in the same direction so if you can have a good way of telling which way is going to be what that always helps but that's for another day right now we just want to get to the moon Let's take a look at we have almost half a tank of this left plus this fuel tank so more than enough in fact this tank here may be able to get us all all the way there so we can bring this all back and let all this burn up in the carbon atmosphere Should be nice for not littering okay so let's speed ourselves up here and get into this encounter Slow it down a little bit and take a look here in the scenic view. Okay, looks like we're coming up on the left side of the moon. So that means a clockwise orbit. Uh, 
Okay, we've almost reached the encounter. So let's go ahead and get there. Slow it down just before we get there because well, we don't have a really precise orbit, so it's not that big of a deal. But sometimes this will change your uh, periapsis. 62. 62. Okay, so that was that was fine. But sometimes if you're trying to be really precise, like for an arrow break, that could make a difference. Okay, so it looked, it's exactly what it looked like. We're getting a clockwise orbit. Uh, we are now in the influence of the moon, so we can start doing some science. All we need to do, uh, let's get our crew report. Space high over the moon, because this is the high region, 15 science. We will go ahead and transmit that. Should have brought some batteries, because I forgot that this might, but we'll be burning the rockets some, so we'll get our charge back. All right, but that's the only time we have to do that. Now we can do an EVA. So this might be another opportunity for Space higher over the moon. Okay, 24 science for that. We'll go ahead and keep that because there's no point in transmitting that. We're heading back. Uh, so it looks like we've... Okay, he's drifted down the ladder a bit. Go ahead and board. Let's go ahead and get another screenshot. All right, now we'll do the upper ones as high orbit. However, the moon, 30 science. We'll keep that data. We'll do another one. And this one isn't getting 30 science. It's really getting just most of this. So keep that in mind when you do multiple experiments. Uh, it will always show you as much as you get on the first one, but second, third, and fourth are going to get slivers of that. So we'll keep that data. And now observation bay. 75 science from that. Keep that data. All right, now the question is, where is the boundary between high and near orbit, near space of the moon? And so we got to keep checking that as we go down. So we can fly pretty close. So let's go in and adjust our periapsis. Let's see, what is our flight profile? Wow, we're actually being ejected from the Kerbin system at this uh, flight profile. And we do not want that. Um, Okay, and just getting an idea, I'm, I'm, like I said, in my mind, I'm trying to figure out how to tell. So we came out in front of it, and now the moon is catching up to us, and we're going to get flung that way. But we want to bring this down. We have plenty of fuel, so once we get out of here, we can adjust our orbit to get back in the Kerbin. So I'm not worried about that. So we want to lower that periapsis so let's put a maneuver just to kind of give us an idea i believe let's see what let's see what slowing us down does first 44 35 27 12 okay that's let's let's go ahead and do a really close flyby because we want to know whether the boundary is 50,000 meters, 20,000 meters, uh, 
you know, we don't know yet. Actually, I do know from 0.22, but it may have changed. Uh, but this is the kind of experiment you have to perform if you want to go ahead and find this kind of data out yourself rather than looking up in the wiki. So let's go down to 12,000. That's a safe height. There are some high mountains, but 12 should be safe. Uh, just a 52, 53 meter per second burn, which is practically nothing. Let's find our marker. And of course, the blue marker is always on the opposite side of whatever direction you go, but that's not too bad there. Burning on retrograde. And actually, now that I know what this is, I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and keep that up and then go by eyeball, eyeballing that. So down to 50. Down to 40, 30, 20, okay, below 15 would be good. I, I doubt it's going to be as low as 15. That just gives us a chance to find that out. All right, let's start getting closer to the moon. Uh, let's start checking at about 100,000. We need to get a lot closer now. See, yeah, we still have, we barely used any fuel to make that maneuver. And just see, what did that do? Yeah, we're still being ejected from the Kerbin system. So let's speed this guy up. So about a million, million meters still. And get a screenshot of that. Okay, we're 800,000. We'll actually start checking at 200,000. Just to be safe. Because Kerbin was 250,000. All right, so we're under 250,000. Let's just check their goo container. Still high over the moon, so we'll discard that. Get a little closer. Let's go under 200,000. Check it again. High over the moon. All right, let's drop to 150,000. So if we overshoot, we can always recalculate it on our way out. So it's not like we have to be super accurate here. It's just a good number to know. Okay, 150,000. Still high over the moon. Drop to a hundred thousand. Okay, that's where the camera goes crazy. Higher with the moon, a hundred thousand. All right, now we'll do it in ten thousand increments. Though I doubt it's 90,000, but you never know. High over the moon at 90,000. Okay, under 80,000. High over the moon. Uh, 
70,000. High over the moon, okay, 60,000. Near the moon, okay, so 60,000 is that magic number. So now we can go ahead and save the science, 30 science there. Let's get our other goo container. So probably nine or 10. Materials Bay, 75. Crew report, another 15, and finally an EVA. All right, Lem, all right, Lem Tree, one more. And notice the take data. That means that now you can actually use your Kerbals to transfer data between modules. So say this was a lander and you had a another vessel that you're going to go back to Kerbin with and you did your science on Duna, say, you could grab the observations, the data you made off of this and bring it back to uh, the other um, command module. I don't think you can do that with uh, experiments, but this is a good way of having a multi-command module mission. All right, so EVA report. All right, 24 science there. All right, now we can board. Let's check out our attitude here. Okay, so essentially once we get, the fact that we're being ejected just means we're going too fast. So if, if we burn retrograde uh, out here No, once we get out of Mooner influence, because otherwise if we burn retrograde, we'll get into an orbit, which is fine. That would, would slow us down, but then we'd have to burn out again. So we'll just go ahead and wait until we get to the Kerbin periapsis, uh, burn retrograde, and that'll drop us back into Kerbin orbit, and we can go home. All right, so let's go ahead and speed this up. We're on the dark side, so we're not getting a lot of There we go. Oops, let's slow this down and see what kind of view we got here. Okay, let's go ahead and take another another screenshot here just in case. All right, let's see what happens here when we get back into Kerbin influence. Alright, like I said, now we want to burn retrograde pretty hard. We don't have to change it because at, at most, you know, at 800 meters per second out here, if we drop that to zero, we just fall straight into Kerbin. And I'm sure we have more than enough delta V to take care of this. Alright, and this isn't doesn't really have to be a super accurate burn. We just need to drop this into orbit. There we go. Now just drop this apoapsis down. Plenty of fuel. Still a third of the tank on this bigger tank. Swap periapsis and apoapsis. Oh, we got another Mooner encounter at some point, but we're dropping below that now.
Lots of fuel. Go ahead and drop this into the atmosphere and just go ahead and go straight home. We want probably a 20,000. We're going to be coming in hot from this high orbit, so fortunately there's no consequences for the extra heat. So let's go home. And we don't have to worry about leaving this stage or this stage in orbit as debris. We'll actually get... Let's see where... Oh. Okay, leaving... Leaving the moon. We actually slowed down enough where it passed us up again. And now to look at approaching Kerbin. Kind of weird view. There we go. All right, in the atmosphere. Coming down fast. Turn off the SAS. We will wait until we have a collision. Okay, we do have a collision, so now I can stage. Let those guys fly off on their own. Wow, we're already down to 19,000. We're coming in hot, hot, hot. Ready to... Down to 1,000. Still supersonic. And deploy the gear. All right, we are bringing home a gob full of science from this mission. Deploy the parachutes. And I will see you on the ground. Stuck the landing. All right. Then we're back, but we're at the grasslands. Um, no, but we're at the grasslands, so we're, we wouldn't get any new science from a sample down here. So we won't worry about that. Let's recover our vessel and see how much science we gathered on this mission. Bingo, 298.8 science, giving us a total of 335. At 90 science per techno, that's three new technodes we got from just, just one mission. And it was a simple mission too. Didn't have to worry about landing. Uh, just a f simple flyby. Didn't even have to try to get in orbit. All right, so let's see what our options are here. Okay, let's go ahead and get into our heavy rocketry. We'll get the poodle and the quarter tank. Well, let's take a look at that one for that. But that will probably get that. Over here, we're getting a lot of parts for some of the larger um, pieces. Yep, that's the eighth tank. 
another decoupler. Some aerodynamic stuff. We're not going to play too much with that. Uh, this is mainly focused on getting into space and around other planets for our science. Uh, again, some more aerodynamic. Although we're getting a inline stabilizer and a another pro body. Here's the one that we definitely want to start getting a solar panel, lights, and a bigger battery. Uh, ladders, a thermometer, some extra science, and the processing lab. And landing struts and wheels for a plane. So not really a big deal there. Okay, so definitely more science. Let's unlock that. Electricity, solar panels, let's unlock that. And we can unlock one more. Let's go ahead and get the large rocketry. I don't think we'll be using this right away, but the question is what does some of these others unlock? We're gonna unlock everything, so before we move on, because that's one of the stated goals, the show that you don't have to kind of skip ahead to accomplish everything. Okay, let's go ahead and get the large rocketry. And our archives. Now we have some entries for Moon. So we've gotten everything from a crew report, everything from EVA reports. Uh, we could still do a little bit of material study and get uh, some decent amount of science, maybe 20 total. Recovery of the vessel from a flyby. And notice it actually counts that as different than probably being in orbit around the moon. So that's something to consider once we're in orbit around the moon come back. We'll get a uh, different recovery value. So very, very good. And that means this, we essentially get this same amount from doing the same mission on Minmus and we know our rocket can do it. So that is next. This is going to be a much quicker mission profile because we do not need to change anything. We know this can get in the orbit if barely. Uh, we're going to change out Lem Tree, give someone else the glory this time. Uh, John B. Okay, let's do John B. He's pretty smart. Uh, we didn't make any changes to the ship. Let's save just in case. Go ahead and launch. In this one, I'll do, record the whole thing in case anything exciting happens, but I will probably be doing some heavy editing because we're going to do exactly the same thing we did on the moon with Minmus. Is we're just going to fly by, we're going to get in orbit of Kerbin, uh, escape Kerbin, fly by Minmus, get all that science, come back and land. So it really isn't any different, which kind of demonstrates that we can get some really good science, like I said, without any really complicated missions. We haven't even landed yet, and we're pretty much going to unlock the entire next tier with just these two missions. So I just want a little touch of throttle on the main engines, SAS on, and... You will, like, like I said, you will be seeing a very highly edited version of this flight. So, three, two, one, lift off.
All right, as you can see, we made it into orbit. That last launch stage was a bit weak, so we were kind of fighting with our apoapsis. But we have a nice 79 by 71 orbit, which is good enough for what we need to do, which is get to Minmus. And I can't recall strictly what the burn is. I think it's... You want a little bit behind here, but we'll find that out. We'll just set a maneuver node. Put it somewhere around the Minmus and then start swinging it around. There is something. There's our encounter. All right, it's 925, so not much more than we had to burn for the moon. We have our final stage, so let's... Put ourselves on the marker and then head over for our burn. Whoops, almost burned right through the uh, encounter there, but okay, let's... Let's get our retrograde burn going here and get into orbit. I think that's going to be the safer bet in this case because it's going to be too hard to get it low enough for our near Minmus science otherwise. And the kind of orbit for this doesn't matter because we're not trying to rendezvous with anything where there's no specific region on Minmus we need to reach. Just need to wrap that around. This will pull her over it. Let's bring down periapsis down to about a hundred thousand. And then we'll use that. The size of the boundary between near and high depends on the size of the uh, body. So since the moon was uh, 60,000, we can pretty sure, we're pretty sure bet that um, it's less than 60,000 for Minmus. So if we get down to 100,000 and then use that to lower this, and we can get a nice, um, a nice trajectory for testing where that boundary is. So let's go ahead and get to the periapsis. Not burned by it this time like I almost did intercepting here. Nope. No, I, and I did exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. Oh well. Just And again.
very touchy. All right, let's move in. We can actually do our science for high orbit. Crew report. Tempted to taste the surface. 20 science for that. Let's keep that data. Actually, it will transmit that data. That will use up about 30 of our electricity. And now we'll do an EVA. Thirty-two science there, so we're actually getting more science than we did at the moon. Uh, I think this is twenty-four at the at moon and thirty-two at Minmus, so this is going to be even better. I believe it was the same uh, between moon and Minmus in point two two. Okay, so board. All right, and we use the top row of experiments for. I orbit 40. It says 40, but actually we're getting just that. And now our materials bay. 100 science. Keep that data. All right, now the task is to find the near, near boundary. So I think we're near... Approaching our periapsis, so let's get into, let's go find a retrograde. And we'll lower this orbit. Go ahead and start burning now, it's not a big deal. Where we burn, it's not quite as efficient as if we waited. This is the one we want to actually track now. So we want to get this down to a little less than 20, I think. There we go. All right, now we'll do our, start running our tests. Let's see, where's our, there's Kerbin, there's Moon. And since we're in a polar orbit, we're either above or below it. There we are, we're above. And we're 110,000. Um, we know we're at high, so we'll, Check each 10,000 below 100,000. Still high. Actually, let's go ahead and go down to 60. Like I said, it's going to be less than than moon simply because the relative sizes of the bodies. So we'll save a little time by just going straight for 60,000. Okay, still high over Minmus. Okay, let's try 50. Fifty is still high over Minmus. Forty. Still high over Minmus. All right. Now thirty. Near Minmus. Okay, so 30. It might be 35. We'll check that on the way out. 
Let's go ahead and get our near minima science now. Keep data. Get the other side. Keep that data. Materials bay. Keep data. Crew report. Perhaps we could land there. Yes, we may. Keep the data. And finally, an EVA. Uh, EVA report from space just above Minmus's slope. So there are biomes now on Minmus. So we can actually get multiple EVA reports here. And each one will give us 32 science. So I believe it is worth the effort. So we'll keep that data. So let's go ahead and go board. Uh, let's go ahead and drop Coming down to 17, we know 30 is below, so we'll go ahead and drop. Actually, let's go ahead and find out what that is, then we'll orbit around and then drop and then look for new biomes. So let's first find out the boundary for sure, whether it's 30 or 35. So let's get up to just over 30. And I guess an EVA, since we already used all our goo containers, we can't test with that, but we can test with an EVA. High over minimus, so 30 is the boundary. So that's good to know. All right, so now let's go back to here. We'll circle around, drop our apoapsis down below 30, and take a bunch of different EVA reports and see what kind of um, biomes we can find. Because it's good to know what biomes are there so we can plan some landing missions. All right, let's get into retrograde. Drop this apoapsis. below 30. All right, now we can do a lot of biome testing here. Uh, so let's get back to our view of the ship. I'm going to go ahead and get another screenshot. EVA. Okay, slopes. We already have slopes. So it's probably slopes and lake beds. It might also be highlands or something like that. Um, let's go ahead and board. Where are we? Let's go ahead and get... Get to the pole. And poles might have something. That's approximately the South Pole. Poles, okay, yes, that is a new biome. And just as poles, let's say North or South, so either one would do for a landing. Keep the data, board. All right, now we want to get over one of the flat lakes if possible. I 
think it's hard to tell whether any are over what this region is here Midlands okay that's a new biome keep data board all right I think the flatlands is the main one we haven't found that yet if we get that I will be happy and then we can go home. There might be more, but we'll have more than enough science from this mission. If the last mission got us almost 300 and Minmus is worth more and we have more EVA reports, we're going to get close to 400, maybe 450, maybe 500 from this one mission. So again, this shows that, you know, we're not really having to go do some hugely difficult missions to get the kind of science we need to unlock these uh, new techs. Now we're not over a lake or flat lake bed yet. I think on the next orbit we might have one rotate under us. Yeah, this, there we go, right, coming up. Let's see what's here now. Midlands, we already have Midlands. Really hard to see, but I think somewhere up there is Yeah, right up there. There it is. Let's go ahead and board. Speed up just a bit. I think, yeah, there it is. That's it right there. Really hard to see. It's probably even more difficult for you to see on the video. Great flats, there we go. 32 more science. All right, I am happy with this mission. Let's go home. We'll still have about a quarter tank in our main tank, and that be at least enough to get us out of Minmus's orbit. And really all we have to do is escape, and we'll start falling back towards Kerbin, even though we're in this kind of weird polar orbit. Uh, Kerbin's Spear of Influence reaches out here, so all I have to do is burn prograde pretty much anywhere. Until we get an escape, and then we can adjust once we're in the Kerbin's Spear of Influence. And that's a big orbit, but we can bring that down pretty darn easily. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here. There's nothing really important to show you other than just getting back and seeing how much science we have ma managed to get. We have plenty of fuel, like I said, so I'm just gonna Go ahead and uh, 
Uh, the question is whether I'm going to get captured by Minmus again, but let's find out. we got plenty of fuel. I think this will just let Minmus pass us by. Drop in our orbit. Still plenty of fuel. This might do it just by itself. And speaking of coming in hot, we are really going to be coming in screaming on this one. Okay, we're within the atmosphere. Let's get down to about 20. 15, 16, that'll do. All right, so we can, again, bring all these stages back and not leave them as debris in orbit. Speed up and... Where's Minmus? Yep. Yeah. Because we're out past Minmus. There's Minmus, Kerbin. Somewhere in there is the moon. I think that's the north, proper north orientation. There's the moon. Get ready to slow this down before I burst through the atmosphere and miss Kerbin completely. Slows down to a thousand. Just missed an encounter with the moon. Whoa, that's an interesting <laughs> little bug. All right, we are in the atmosphere. As soon as this drops down to ground, we'll detach. Like I said, we were coming in hot. Okay, let's extend the gear. And I will see you on the ground. Well, that was unfortunate. Um, looks like we lost one goo container and one of our materials bays from falling over. So we've lost this quite a bit of science. I think it was a hundred from the materials bay. Um, let's see, where are we? Wow, that's explosive. Um, I was trying to roll this over so I could get John B out and do a surface sample since I think we are in a mountain biome. Tiny 
Islands. Okay, we've already done one here. All right, so the Highlands. So that does not going to give us a whole lot. Um, let's go ahead and do an EVA anyway. And yeah, nothing there. All right, let's recover. So we lost all of the high orbit science. So we could go back for that, but that I'm not going to do that right now. Let's recover. We'll cover John B. He gave us 2.3 for that surface sample. We'll recover. That's the capsule. We'll re recover that. 200 science from that, from all the EVA reports and crew report. So that's a nice bit of... Uh, and we got 20 for the recovered vessel. And now for the rest of it, we have to do is go to the debris and find moon debris landed. Recover that. And now we can recover the science vessels and get the science from those. So 149.2. So we lost this much from losing the other uh, container and goo containers. So there's another 150 we can get from Minmus orbit if we go back. So we could do that as part of one of the landing missions. So let's fi take our final tally of our science. We have... 437 we had less than 90 remember we lost 150 so we would have been up to 580 but that is enough to start unlocking some of these let's go ahead and get these parts uh, these will be useful aerodynamics And finally, the landing gear. So we have completed the next tier simply from orbiting the moon and Minmus. We haven't even landed yet. So now we have one, two, three, four, five complete tiers. We're going to be working on tier six next. Each of those cost 160 science. We know we have 150 waving for us in orbit around Minmus, plus a whole lot to get from landing on Moon and Minmus. So that will be the next chore, and we'll see how much of this we can unlock from missions to the Moon and Minmus. So that will be the next episode. I want to thank you for joining me. This is Jim. This has been How to Science and Kerbal Space Program 0.23. Have a great day.